Welcome back to my channel Math School. In today's video, let us solve example 19 from chapter 3, pair of linear equations and two variables. In my previous videos, I've completed the examples from the same exercise, exercises 3.1, 3.2 and 3.4. If you have not watched these videos, do find the link in the description box below or click the i button. Above. So now quickly, let us begin with the video. Example 19 from chapter 3, pair of linear equations in two variables says, a boat goes 30 kilometers upstream and 44 kilometers downstream in 10 hours. In 13 hours, it can go 40 kilometers upstream and 55 kilometers downstream. Determine the speed of the stream and that of the boat in still water. So first of all, let us understand here the meaning of a stream and still water. What does the word stream mean? In a stream, the water is moving in any one of the directions. Whereas in still water, the water doesn't move or a stagnant water called as a still water. And also let us see what does this word upstream and downstream means. So whenever there is a stream and we have a boat moving on that stream, if the water is flowing in one direction and boat is also moving in the same direction, then we can say that it is downstream. So here if the speed of the boat is x kilometers per hour and the speed of the water flowing is y kilometer per hour, then the total speed will be here the total speed will get added because boat will move faster with the flowing water. Okay, total speed will be x plus y kilometer per hour in downstream. Okay, similarly if you consider upstream, again we have the water is flowing in one direction and the boat is moving in the opposite direction. Okay, if the boat moves in x kilometers per hour and the water is flowing in y kilometer per hour speed, here what will be the total speed? The total speed will be x minus y kilometer per hour since the water and the boat is moving in the opposite direction. If they are moving in the same direction, then the speed will get added up. If it is moving in opposite direction, then the speed will be subtracted. Okay, so this is the case in upstream, right? So this is the meaning of downstream and upstream. Now let us come back to the question. So here we have to determine the speed of the stream and that of the boat in still water. Let us assume speed of the boat in still water to be x kilometers per hour and the speed of the stream to be y kilometers per hour. So let us write down let speed of boat in still water x kilometer per hour and speed of stream be equal to y kilometer per hour okay now coming back to the question here they have given us the two cases in first case a boat goes 30 kilometers upstream and 44 kilometers downstream in 10 hours so this is the first case so here, when the boat goes 30 kilometers upstream, what is the distance traveled? It is 30 kilometers. So distance is equal to 30 kilometers. And the speed of the upstream is, here we have written down, speed of the upstream is x minus y kilometers per hour. Right? So speed of upstream will be x minus y kilometer per hour. So what will be the time taken we have to calculate. Time is given by distance by speed, right? So time, let us take T1 here. When the boat goes 30 kilometers upstream, we will take time as T1. And when it goes downstream, we will take time as T2. So T1 is equal to distance is what here? 30 divided by speed is x minus y. So let this be equation number 1. Similarly, they have given us boat goes 44 kilometers downstream in 10 hours. So when the boat goes 44 kilometers downstream, here what is the distance? Here the distance is again 44 kilometers and in the downstream, what will be the speed? The speed is x plus y kilometers per hour, right? So x plus y kilometers per hour. So what will be the time taken? Let us take as T2 now. 
time taken is equal to distance by speed. So, distance is 44 kilometers divided by speed is x plus y kilometers per hour. So, let this be equation number 2. In the first case, a boat goes 30 kilometers upstream and 44 kilometers downstream and the total time taken here is 10 hours, right? So, we will add equation 1 and 2. We have found out the time for 30 kilometers upstream and time for 44 kilometers downstream. So, therefore, we will add these two times to give us the total time that is 10 hours. So, write add 1 plus 2. So, what is 1? Equation 1 given by 30 divided by x minus y plus 44 divided by x plus y. This is equation 2. So, this is equal to 10. So, let this be equation number 3, right? So, this was the first case. Similarly, the second case given here is the boat can go 40 kilometers upstream and 55 kilometers downstream. So, now let us write down in case 2. Similarly, we will write for case 2. When it goes 40 kilometers upstream, so, here the distance is 40 kilometers and upstream speed is what? x minus y kilometers per hour. So, what will be the time? So, time taken will be equal to distance by speed. So, here the distance is what? Let us take time as t3 here. Distance is 40 kilometers divided by speed is x minus y. So, let this be equation number 4. Similarly, 55 kilometers downstream. When it goes 55 kilometers downstream, for downstream, the speed will be x plus y kilometers per hour. So, this is the distance and this is the speed. So, time taken, let us take time here as t4. So, distance is 55 by time taken is x plus y. So, let us take this as equation number 4. Now, let us add and the total time taken here is 13 hours. So, as the boat goes 40 kilometers upstream and 55 kilometers downstream, it takes a total time of 13 hours. Therefore, here let us add equation 4 and 5 to give us the total time. So, we get 40 divided by x minus y plus 55 divided by x plus y. So, totally equal to 13 hours, that is the total time taken. So, let us take this as equation number 6. Now, if you observe equation 3 and 6, we have 30 divided by x minus y plus 44 divided by x plus y equal to 10. And in equation 6, we have 40 divided by x minus y plus 55 divided by x plus y equal to 13. Here, the denominators are same. So, we have to substitute a different variable here for x minus y and x plus y and then we have to find out their values as we did in example 17 and 18. So, let us substitute 1 by x minus y equal to p and 1 by x plus y equal to q. So, let us substitute in equation 3 and 6. So, if we substitute in 3 and 6, we will obtain the equation as 30, 1 divided by x minus y is p, 30p plus 44, 1 divided by x plus y is q equal to 10 and from equation 6, we can write 40p plus 55q equal to 30. So, here we obtained a pair of linear equation. Now, let us solve this pair of linear equation by elimination method and find out the value of P and Q so that we can determine the X and Y value. So, we got the equation as 30P plus 44Q equal to 10 and 40P plus 55Q equal to to eliminate one of the variables, we should make sure that the coefficients are equal. But here we can observe that none of the two variables coefficients are equal in both the equation. So, let us multiply the first equation by 4 and second equation by 3 such that we can make the variables of P to be 
equal right so 4 into 30 will be 120 p plus 4 into 44 will be how much 4 into 4 is 16 carry 1 again 4 4 is a 16 plus 1 17 so 176 q equal to 4 into 10 will be 40 similarly 4 into 3 here is 120 p plus 55 into 3 will be 5 into 3 is 15 carry 1 and 5 into 3 is 15 plus 1 it is 16 so 165 q equal to 3 into 3 is 9 and 3 ones are 3 again here we have the signs same so we have to change the sign of either of the one equation so let us change the sign for second equation plus 120p will become minus 120p here again plus will become minus plus 39 will become minus 39 right so this variable p will get eliminated so we have plus 176q and minus 165q tracting how much will be left here 6 minus 5 is 1 and 7 minus 6 is 1 and 1 minus 1 is 0 so we got here 11 q and greater number sign will come here so it is plus 11 q equal to again 40 minus 39 will be 1 since greater number is 40 we get plus 1 okay so therefore q value here we got as 1 by 11 right now let us substitute this q value in this first equation that is 30 p plus 44 q equal to 10 and let us find out p value so substitute q equal to 1 by 11 in so let us take this as equation 7 and this as 8 substitute q equal to 1 by 11 in equation 7 okay so 30 p plus 44 into q value is 1 by 11 equal to 10 so we can cancel here 11 1 times 11 4 times so we get 30 p plus 4 equal to 10 send this 4 to right hand side we get 30 p equal to 10 minus 4 or 30 p equal to 10 minus 4 is 6 so therefore p value will be 6 divided by 30 so cancelling 6 1 times 6 5 times so therefore we get p value is equal to 1 by 5 right so we got p as 1 by 5 and q as 1 by 11 whereas we had assumed initially p value as equal to 1 by x minus y and q as equal to 1 by x plus y so therefore let us write down p is equal to 1 by x minus y and here we got p value as equal to 1 by 5 so let us equate right hand sides so therefore we get 1 by 5 is equal to 1 by x minus y cross multiplying we get x minus y equal to 5 so let us name this as equation 9 similarly we had also assumed q value as equal to 1 by x plus y and here we got q value as equal to 1 by 11 right so let us equate right hand sides of q value so we get 1 by 11 is equal to 1 by x plus y cross multiplying we get x plus y as equal to 11 so let us mark this as equation number 10 now we have obtained again two equations so let us again apply the elimination method here and find out the x and y value so from equation 9 we have x minus y equal to 5 and equation 10 is x plus y equal to 11 so apply elimination method again so here if you observe the coefficient of y is 1 in both the equation and also the sign is plus and minus here we can directly eliminate the y variable so we will be left with here plus x and plus x will be added to become 2x equal to again 5 plus 11 will be 16. So therefore x will be equal to 16 by 2 or 2 1 times to 8 times. So we got x is equal to 8. Now let us substitute this x value in equation 9. Substitute x equal to 8 in equation 9 here x minus y is equal to 8 x is here 8 minus y equal to 5 so let us send this y to right hand side and 5 to left hand side so we get 8 
minus 5 is equal to y or y is equal to what is 8 minus 5 it is 3 right so we got x is equal to 8 and y is equal to 3 so what had we assumed the x and y initially we had assumed the speed of the boat in still water to be x kilometers per hour and the speed of the stream to be y kilometers per hour so therefore we can write the speed of boat in still water is equal to x kilometers per hour that is 8 kilometers per hour and the speed of stream is y kilometers per hour that is equal to 3 kilometers per hour this problem is little lengthy but if you practice and understand the problem it is very easy to solve so this is how we solve this problem if you have any further doubts do comment me below in the comment section in my next video, I'll be solving question number 1 from exercise 3.6, chapter 3, pair of linear equations and two variables. So till then, do like my video, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell button below to get the latest updates of my videos as I'll be completing the whole syllabus for class 10th SLC and cert math. And also do watch the related videos of chapter 3, pair of linear equations shown on the screen.